In this video, we're going to look at our ICD-10 crosswalk utility, part of the EDI utility toolbox, uh, which contains 19 tools at the time of this video. This is one of them. There's actually a couple tools in here we're going to use to complement our crosswalking today. Uh, how does it work? First of all, it's, it's converting your raw EDI files. This is not something that works on your billing system. Your billing system will produce your 837 professional, institutional, or dental file. And your uh, crosswalker will crosswalk the diagnosis codes and or the procedure codes, not the CPT code or service level codes, but the HI segment. So for uh, diagnoses, this is a picture of the specification for an 837. Um, we're, we're covering the HI segments for diagnoses as well as the HI segments for procedure information. Uh, so how does it work? Well, converting down uh, from 10 to 9, from ICD-10 to ICD-9, you have two choices. You can use the CMS General Equivalency Map. We also have the 3M Reimbursement Map, which was commissioned by CMS, um, which is a little more precise. Uh, when you're converting from um, ICD-9 to ICD-10, there is no uh, 3M reimbursement map, so we only have the general equivalency map. However, we do have the ability to write your own map and edit the maps as they exist. So let's talk about some of the scenarios you'll be converting. When you're doing a code A to a code B type scenario in either direction, um, it grabs code B. You know, if it was that easy, we wouldn't need a crosswalking tool. Most of them don't have, you know, a one-to-one -one choice like that. Uh, in some cases, we have code A, which translates into more than one code. So code A might become code B plus code C and code D. So we will handle that. We'll grab code B. We'll also add the additional DX codes as required. Um, and the file will be uh, formatted and segment counts uh, properly counted, etc. Um, now, when we get into scenarios of one to many, uh, where code A could be code B or could be code C, or it could be code D, or what have you. Uh, we don't have a good mental telepathy module developed yet, so we have no uh, further intelligence. So what the mapper will do is grab the first one in the list. So this is where you'll want to consider possibly overrides and edits. Also have a scenario of one to many, many, where code A might become a series of codes, B plus C plus D, or it could be B plus E plus F, et cetera, et cetera. Again, much like our last scenario, we will grab uh, the first one in the list, lacking any other intelligence, and we'll add the proper DX codes um, as required. Where code A doesn't have a match, presumably in that case, it's a bad code to start with, you're kind of out of luck, uh, but you have two choices. Uh, you can leave it as is and let it error out, if you will. You can also enter some kind of default. So anytime it comes across a non-match, it puts a default value in. And that default could be um, a valid code, ICD code. Um, it could also be some kind of a trigger code. Some, some folks out there are using something like the word error or something that they can flag. So uh, when, they, when they scan the file using other means, uh, it sticks out. So then what? Now you've made a conversion. You've got a couple choices. You can uh, send it as is to your trading partner. You can edit the file uh, after the fact and make changes to codes that you weren't happy with because there's full logging. Uh, you can also uh, preemptively edit the map or create your own map for that matter to change your preferences. So in my particular environment, I'm always going to crosswalk this code to this code. Uh, that sort of thing. You can set that up. Now let's talk a minute about the workflow before we get into the actual demo. It works on a, a batch process. It's going to work on an entire folder full of files. Um, so in this case, we have a bunch of 837 sitting in a staging folder. So what it's going to do is when executed, it's going to grab that first file. It's going to convert it up or down based on the map you have set and the rule that you're running. And it will take a copy of the original file and it will make the changes from ICD 9 to 10 or vice versa, and it will put a copy of that converted file into a new location, an outgoing folder, if you will. And it also logs what it did, and we'll show you both uh, types of logging that it does. Then it takes your original file unchanged and unharmed and will archive it, uh, if you choose to do so, in a separate location. Then it moves on to the next uh, 837 file in that folder until it goes empty. And then that staging folder has been um, emptied and ready for the next batch, if you will. 
Uh, before we go into the demo, I do want to point uh, our uh, viewers over to the CMS website that has lots of resources on using the gems and the reimbursement maps and the pros and cons and when you should and when you shouldn't. I would encourage everybody, if you're not already familiar with this, uh, to please uh, go and familiarize yourself. All right, let's take a look at it. All right, here is our EDI utility toolbox, our ICD DIN crosswalk tools, this one down here in the lower left. Um, before we actually do it, let's um, take a look at what we're going to be converting. I happen to have a folder on my local drive. This could just as equally uh, be a just as easily be a network folder. And I have a couple folder, or a couple files rather, um, to 837 professionals. They are in ICD 10 format. And I can actually show you one of these. We'll take a look at this one right here. Now this here is a separate um, tool. It's called our uh, response file reader, power reader. And it um, is not part of the toolbox, but it lets you look at EDI files. And I just want to point a few things out here. This uh, displays this 837 in uh, human readable form in a grid, sort of like you'd see in a spreadsheet. Um, and you can actually also take a look at the raw EDI of a given claim. I'm going to click this button right here, and you can see uh, from the raw EDI perspective, we're looking at the HI segments. This has one here, uh, and it's got an ABK qualifier, or ABF qualifier, et cetera. Those are uh, indicative of, indicative rather, of um, ICD-10 qualifiers. So we're going to be uh, converting these. Um, so let's um, launch our ICD DIN crosswalk. I'm going to actually minimize our main screen here so we can see it. Um, each crosswalk that you do, or map if you will, um, is a rule. So and you set up as many rules as you want. And each rule, I have one set for stepping up and one set up for stepping down files. Um, when you create a new rule, um, you can call it whatever you wish. I'll just put some. Ghibli Gook in here. Um, we have a container of a rule here. And once you have the name, you can edit that and um, set up the contents or the requirements of the rule. So I'm going to actually close this out, delete that. And we'll take a look at one that we've already created called Step Down. So I'm going to edit this tool here, or this rule here rather. And all the things we need to know on a job, if you will. We're going to do a conversion job. And that's what a rule does. And this particular one um, is going to be going from ICD-10 to ICD-9, and I've chosen the reimbursement map, the RM. I could just as easily have chosen the gem. If I were choosing to go from ICD-9 to 10, I would choose here. Um, so again, each uh, job, if you will. And I will also tell it which um, codes I am um, crosswalking, diagnosis and or procedure codes, those HI segments. Now, also, this is also very handy. Um, if you click a data service qualifier, you can say, uh, and of course, 10.1 is the effective date, which is the default. You can say anything prior to 10.1 when you're going from 9 to 10, ignore it. Or if you're going from 10 to 9, anything after 10.1, ignore it. Or you can leave this blank, and it will indiscriminately change any 9s to 10s that it finds, or any 10s to 9s that it finds. If you wanted to put a default code in when it cannot make a match, this is where you would do it. And then these four uh, paths here you can browse to for the file movement. The input path is absolutely required, and everything else is um, encouraged. So you want to put your output files in a separate location. And these are the recommended uh, folder settings, but you can put them wherever you wish. And you can choose whether or not you want to archive the files, search subdirectories in your input folder here. Um, you can show a progress bar, and then you can clear the archive, the output folder, and the, and the logs that are created um, each time you run it, if you choose. And once you've set this rule up, you can save it, and then all you need to do at that point is execute it. All right, so um, I've created it. I'm going to execute it. I'm going to click OK. And it was literally that fast to go through those two files, less than a second. Obviously, larger files or more files would take a little bit longer, but we made you know 1,197 replacements here. So what we've done 
let me close this out here. Let's go to our folder structure here. Our original folders, I chose not to archive them, so they're still in my input folder, untouched and unchanged. And if I go up into my output folder, I now have two new files, which are copies of the originals plus uh, the changes we made to the ICD codes. And the word step down is the name of the rule I had used. It will place that at the front of the file name so you know which which rule was executed, but the rest of the file uh, remains uh, uh, the original file name. So you can always take a look at it. So if we have, um, here's our original file using our reader tool. And if I take a look uh, next to it, we'll put them side by side. Let me open up the um, chain. Oops. And here we have the same file, and you can kind of scooch over to the right here, look at our diagnosis codes, our principal, and our additional in ICD-10. And if we kind of go over to this side here, you can see they have, in fact, been changed. If we take a look at our first uh, claim here, you will also see that the HI segment, which was an ABK before, is now a BK, and it, the code has been changed. The ABF is now a BF, etc. So we have made the changes. Now let's talk a little bit about the logging. Two, two actual log files were created, one called an audit, one called a log. Uh, the log file uh, does a couple important things. First of all, it tells you what it did in start and end time, which we also saw on that splash screen. And it showed that the two files were in fact um, converted. Here is your first file, and 500 uh, records were converted. The second file here uh, was also converted and there were 689 conversions, but we also have uh, five instances where there was no crosswalk available. So this code 311 did not exist in the map and it was not converted. Now this 2063 and this 1795, the 2063 or the first uh, value there is the claim number and the second value there is the line number. Now, line numbers don't really exist in the in, in, um, EDI file, but we you can use our EDI toolbox or some other text editor that inserts carriage returns and allows you to actually go find that record. So let's actually take a look at that. So in our EDI utility toolbox, which um, includes an EDI file editor along with your crosswalker, you can use these tools in tandem. Now, there's another video out on the web that talks about um, how to use the editor in some some detail here but I'm just gonna walk over to I'm actually gonna call it the original file it was this one right here as you can see you know right here but I'm actually gonna go to the original file but you can go to either and what we have here is each of the loops and segments are um, laid out in a grid style and we also have line numbers optionally inserted which you see down here in the lower right and we all have the option, also have the option to go to a specific line number. So if I want to go find that record up there, 1795, line number 1795, it will take me to line number 1795, um, but it will also highlight the entire claim in red. So I can see the whole claim. So on seven, line 1795, somewhere through here, I should find the value of 311, which we're seeing over here. Um, in this record that could not be converted. And sure enough, way on the end here, there's an ABF 311, which is not in our map. Perhaps it's invalid, perhaps it's a proprietary code. You got a couple options here. You can do um, an edit, you can just change this into something else. You know, put some more uh, different characters in there if you so choose. choose. You can also take that entire diagnosis off altogether if you'd like. That's um, how you fix that file is certainly up to you. Um, but the tool here helps you do that. Second file we're going to show you in the log area is the audit log. And all this is is just a running total of everything that was changed in that run. All 1197 changes that were made. It will tell you the code that was crossed, the file of course, and then the code it was crosswalked from and to, and then again the claim number and the line number are provided for reference.
Okay, a couple other things here. Let's take a look at our ID cross, ICD-10 crosswalk. Again, there's a couple points down here. Um, options, we have a code lookup. So for example, you wanna look up um, from going from 10 to nine, you wanna look up a, a diagnosis code. Let's say M2010. It will report back to you the crosswalk um, for um, the gem as well as the RM. So in this case, um, using the RM, we would have gotten a one-to-one -one conversion. So uh, that M2010 would convert into a 7350 in ICD-9. Uh, let's suppose we, in our uh, operation, typically go to 7271. Uh, so we don't want to use the RM value on this particular case when we're doing our particular coding here. So what you can also do is go to the crosswalk editor and you can add a new value by selecting new we're going to say um, again for for the 10 to 9 conversion for a diagnosis code we're going to say m2010 is going to crosswalk to 7271 so that's the way we're going to do it. This will override any of the maps. And likewise, if you want to make your own map, you can do it here. If you've got a subset in a particular industry of maybe a handful of codes are all you use and you know how you want them mapped, you can map it here. If you have a very large set of uh, mapping changes that are proprietary, we can have those imported as well. These are actually stored in a text file um, that can very easily uh, be um, handled off outside like using Excel or some other tool. And that is the ICD-10 crosswalk. Questions or comments, please call or email anytime.